Hello, hello everyone. Jamie Trell here, your favorite CPA and financial literacy coach. And I'm here, it's September of 2023. When I'm recording this, it's coming out in October, but there is some new information on the employee retention tax credit. So we're gonna jump into talking about what has come out from the IRS, whether you're someone who's thinking about getting the ERC, or maybe you already got it and you're wondering how this impacts you. We're gonna talk about all of that and I have some free resources to help you out and to make sure that you are protected as a small business owner. Now, real quick before we jump in, if you're wondering what the heck is behind me, it's fall, y'all, my favorite season of all time. So I've brought out the decorations. This is Sammy the Spider, say hi. <laughs> <laughs> He's excited to hear about ERC as well. So this is what came out from the IRS this month. And this was a statement that the IRS made to say, okay, we're stopping processing these new claims. If you have not filed your ERC claim and you were planning to this week or next week, it ain't gonna be processed until at least after the end of 2023. Okay, and the reason for this stoppage is because the IRS has been yelling and screaming for months. I have been yelling and screaming for almost a year about some of the unethical practices that are happening in this industry, okay? And I'm not talking about specifically these small business owners. And the IRS in this notice really recognizes the fact that it is not small business owners that are the ones that are um, really perpetrating this. It is small business owners that are being taken advantage of by bad actors that are out there that are essentially saying, yes, you qualify for the employee retention tax credit. They might be a little sus in how they're calculating that out. And they're just not giving them all the information. So ultimately they're saying, we're gonna pause the processing any of these new claims that are coming in and we're gonna put some controls in place to make sure that we can prevent fraud so I wanted to read really quickly from here because I think it's interesting these were some of the IRS commissioners statements and I think that they're really telling about what is going on in this space so what he said is the IRS is increasingly alarmed <laughs> <laughs> uh, about honest small business owners being scammed by unscrupulous actors. And we could no longer tolerate growing evidence of questionable claims pouring in. The further we get into the, from the pandemic, the further we see the good intentions of this important program being abused, right? The further out, the more we have people that are jumping in that are really just seeing this as a way to get rich quick, to get in on all the cash that's coming out from the government. The continued aggressive marketing of these schemes is harming well-meaning businesses and delaying the payment of legitimate claims, which make it harder to run the rest of the tax season. This harms all taxpayers, not just ERC applicants. So this is really clogging up the tax system. This is really a problem, um, but it is harming these the, the entire tax system as it is. For those people that are being press pressured by promoters to apply for the ERC, I urge them to immediately pause, immediately pause, and review their situation while we look to add new protections and safeguards to stop bad claims from ever coming in. So they're saying, let's take a pause, let's everybody take a pause. Um, in the meantime, businesses should seek out a trusted tax professional, y'all, trusted tax professional, who actually understands the complex ERC rules, not a promoter or marketer hustling to get a hefty contingency fees, okay? Businesses that receive ERC payments improperly face the daunting prospect of paying those back. Okay, so we urge the utmost caution. The moratorium will help protect taxpayers by adding a new safety net onto this program to focus on fraudulent claims and scammers taking advantage of honest taxpayers. I will link this down below so that you can go check out the entire thing because it's really useful to read, especially if you were someone who has filed an ERC claim. And there's a great question and answer guide as well that will guide you through, did I really qualify? Because I think a lot of business owners have relied on these companies in order to tell them whether or not they qualify. And they are very, very convincing in what they tell you, but does that really align with the IRS guidance? And that is the real question. So you can actually do this yourself and go to this question and answer guide. It's really useful. Um, you just ask, it's basically like a five question questionnaire and you go through it and it will essentially check whether or not you're eligible and give you some next steps for what to do if you find out you actually weren't eligible. So definitely check out those resources. I will link them all below. Let's talk about these aggressive promoters, right? Because I know you know what I'm talking about. I know you've seen them. You've seen them on Facebook ads. They're spamming your phone like they're spamming mine, right? Leaving you all of these messages. It has gone bananas, y'all. <laughs> 
this was bizarre in the beginning, but it has just gotten to a whole new level of crazy. So we have people who are trusted faces, right? Like Phil Dunphy is on my Instagram feed trying to get me to, you know, get a second opinion on my ERC. I've got Mr. Wonderful that's hitting me up, right, for his company that's doing this. And I'm not saying that those are scams I don't know specifically, but again, there is a whole spectrum of scams, right? And not all of these are companies that are just gonna take your money and run, but could they be interpreting the rules a little loosey-goosey to the point where you may be opening yourself up to IRS audit and getting that money clawed back? Yeah. Or are they just charging really unconscionable fees in these percentage contingency fees, which I have been warning about for a long time, tons and tons of people, even legit people are doing this. And I really caution against it. If you are a, a legit tax preparer, please don't do this. Ultimately, these companies are charging 15, 20, 25, sometimes 30% to calculate these credits. And that is bananas. Sometimes they are charging hundreds of thousands of dollars to small businesses to calculate a credit that maybe takes them a couple of days. And I don't want to downplay. It is complicated. It does take work, but that's ridiculous. <laughs> that's completely ridiculous. Go find a CPA, a trusted tax professional, and listen to them. And just if you want proof that this is peak craziness, I found this on TikTok the other day. I didn't sadly get this one. I'm kind of sad that I didn't get this call, but there was a familiar voice that showed up <laughs> on TikTok. So I'm going to show you the video that I pulled from there. And man, this one's, this one was a, this was a new one. Some more wisdom on y'all. Now I got to hit you with some real talk. All you business owners who held it down during the pandemic, I got a gem for you. You know, times were wild, and if you had employees, you might be sitting on a refund that's rightfully yours. But check this out. I got a hookup for you. It's called ERCEnroll.com, and they got the game on lock. Now, here's the kicker. These folks at ERCEnroll.com, they got connections like no other. They can have them funds in your hands quicker than you can roll up your favorite, well, you know what I mean. We're talking just a couple weeks, and boom, you got that cash flowing back where it belongs. So if you're a business owner who's been through the thick of it, don't miss out on this golden opportunity. Slide on over to ERCEnroll.com, let them know Snoop Dogg sent you, and watch the magic happen. It's all about getting what's yours, baby. ERCEnroll.com, they're the real deal, and they got that fast track hookup. Y'all, Snoop Dogg stamp of approval, baby. Peace out. So that's where we're at now, where we're getting Snoop Dogg. I think maybe it's fake Snoop Dogg. I'm not even really sure. <laughs> calling people. He has a weird, almost like Southern accent. So I'm fairly sure that's not the real Snoop Dogg, but Lord only knows at this point with what's going on in the ERC world. And it is just getting more and more absurd by the minute. So the IRS is just like, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're pumping the brakes. This is getting nuts. We're getting all kinds of claims from people. And a lot of these probably aren't legit. So what happens now? That's the question. What happens now? And if you are someone who was thinking about getting the ERC or maybe you already did, what can you do to to protect yourself. So the first thing that you should do after taking that little quiz on the IRS website to determine if you qualified or not, right, is to ask questions of the preparer who did all this. Gather all the documentation. Make sure you have all your ducks in a row, right? So if the IRS comes calling, that you have it ready to go. Remember, they're putting 90% of staff onto these ERC claims. It is not unlikely that you will get audited on this. They're not going to be looking at just, oh, if I'm too small, maybe they won't look at me, right? There is a good chance that you'll get audited on this and you want to be prepared for that, which means you wanna have all the documentation on how you calculated the credit, why you actually qualify for the credit, right? Ready to go in case they come a knocking, okay? So to help with this, if you don't have any of this or if you're not sure what you need, I actually created a script for you that you can send to your ERC company that created this, especially if it was a company that was charging contingent fees, things like that, not your normal CPA, right? I want you to send this to them because some of the answers that you'll get back will be very telling on um, how legitimate this company is. Are they on the up and up? So this script is completely free and you don't even have to put your email in, no opt-in, nothing like that. I just wanna give this to you. You can copy and paste it. You can change it around as needed for your situation. But I did put it together to say, okay, here's what we need from you, right? Confirming how did you qualify? What documentation do they have? If it was based on governmental order, do you have the governmental order that is, you know, documented that you can use if the IRS comes? Because they are going to be asking you for that, not this company, okay? And then also some additional questions around what kind of audit support do you give? What happens if I have to give this money back? If the IRS says I wasn't due this money, 
Will you give me my money back? How would I go about that, right? And just really kind of getting an understanding from that company of what they're willing to do. And I think the answers you're gonna get back are going to be extremely telling as to what type of company you are working with. If they ghost you, <laughs> that tells you a lot. They're probably gonna ghost you when the IRS comes running too. So after you've gathered all that documentation, what can you do, okay? If you are still worried that you actually didn't qualify for this, there are ways that the IRS is going to allow you to be giving back that money. So there's more information in what I am posting. They're going to be putting more information out as well, specifically if, let's say, you got the money and then realized that it wasn't due all to you, or maybe the IRS audits you. Hopefully, it sounds like they are going to be putting some programs in place to help small business owners that were legitimately scammed by these companies. Okay. So if you use one of these companies that told you you qualify, turns out you didn't qualify for it, or you didn't qualify for as much as you got, they are going to be putting into place some things, hopefully that will help you, but I wouldn't rely on that necessarily. Right? So my number three thing for you to do is to set aside that money or um, start building up some money to set aside in case you need to pay this back. If you are concerned about it, it is better to just put it aside and make sure that you're covered so that you're not scrambling to figure out how the heck you're gonna pay this money back when it is long gone. All right, so start kind of putting money aside to be ready in case this happens to you and make sure that you're reading up on what's going on with the IRS. And the fourth thing that I want you to do is to report them. I will put the, the link below to how to report these companies if you know that they were doing this. If you know that a company, maybe you, you ended up not working with them because they told you you qualified when you really didn't, right? Or maybe they're doing shady th things like they didn't actually sign your 941X as a paid tax preparer. If they didn't sign it, that probably tells you something too, right? They don't want this to be their responsibility. They're putting the responsibility on you. So I want you to report what you can. That's the only way the IRS is going to know about this. And that's what's so frustrating, I think, about this is that I've been yelling about this for a long time. The IRS has known about this for a long time, but it takes a while to actually figure out who the bad actors are, you know, who's really doing this out there and see the trends such that they can shut these companies down. It's not as easy as it's seems. And so we think like, well, wouldn't they have done something by now if they knew that this company was doing, you know, questionable things? Not necessarily, right? It takes a while. It takes people reporting what's going on. And the problem is people don't even know that they're being scammed. So how in the world can they report it? So this is part of the problem with how these have been continuing to be able to uh, function is that we just aren't even aware of how pervasive this is. And we just assume that the company that we worked with was legit because we got the money right? So I guess we're good, but that's not necessarily the case. And the next thing that I want you to do is tell us your story. I'm trying to compile as many stories as I possibly can about different companies. And I want to help advocate for small business owners that are being taken advantage of in this situation. If you maybe talked to a company and they told you some suspect things, or maybe you actually went through one of those companies, um, please tell us below. You can either tell us in the comments to this video, or you can email us at support at balancecfo.com. We are collecting all of these stories. We are using this for um, our own fights and we're really trying to advocate for you. I'm in a few legal battles with companies myself that have been using my copyrighted intellectual property um, that I charge $27 to small business owners for. So lots of you have my ERTC calculator, but I charge $27. It is there to help small business owners figure out if they qualify. Again, that's another thing that you can do if you're trying to figure out if you really qualified for this. But we've seen some of these large ERC companies, ERC mills likely, right, that are downloading this, purchased my $27 spreadsheet that was meant for the end small business owner and are using it for commercial purposes to then go turn around, use that to calculate the credit and charge hundreds of thousands of dollars to business owners. And they're making tens of millions of dollars off of a $27 spreadsheet that I created without my permission. This is personal. We are in legal battles with multiple companies like this. The only reason that we know about this is because people told us about it. So if you have documentation from your ERC company, this is just an ask from me and you see my name anywhere on it right? There's some hidden cells and you unhide them and oh, look, there's my script name, Jamie Troll on the top of it, right? Then I need you to tell us that too. Please, please, please report that to us so that we can go after these companies because that is just so wrong. And that is one of the ways that we can combat these bad actors, right? Is I can come at them from an intellectual property perspective and fight, you know, on my behalf, but also on your behalf as a small business owner. And let me just tell you, I am a fighter. <laughs>
I don't back down from a fight. It is not in my nature. So I may seem like a nice person and I am, but don't mess with me and don't mess with these small businesses that I serve, okay? <laughs> Just don't do it because it is not gonna go well for you. So that's it for today. Again, I've linked a bunch of stuff below that I want you to go check out, including that free script that you can just grab and you can copy paste into email and send to the ERC companies that you use to make sure that you have the information that you need in case you are audited in this whole ridiculous mess. <laughs> <laughs> I am rooting for you. Continue to tell me your stories, share this video. That would be absolutely fantastic. I want more people to be aware of this because I don't want people to be blindsided when this happens. So please, please, please share this video to everyone you know who's a, who is a small business owner. Um, I really appreciate it. And thank you for being here. I have more content on ERC. I'll link to all of that too. We have an entire playlist on it if you wanna dive even deeper and I will see you next time.